Welcome to the Sam Sorbo Show. I'm your host, Sam Sorbo. With me is a fantastic guest that I am so excited to speak to. He almost needs no introduction, but I will say that he has made a journey from a left-leaning person to, or a progressive, I guess you would say, to what he calls a classical liberal. And he says it's been quite the adventure. Joining me now is Dave Rubin. Welcome to the program. Sam, it's good to be with you. Man, if I've made it to the point where I don't need an introduction, then I think I'm in my retirement phase. Like it's time, it's time to go to Del Boca Vista, I think. If well, I you're certainly need, do that many people know me? Not bad, this YouTube, I guess. I feel like a lot of people do know you. Am I yeah. maybe I'm the one that's wrong? I just feel like I've known you for a long time and everybody else should as well. Um, so why don't well, why don't we start there just just briefly? Give us a little bit of your journey. Uh, because you are openly gay and conservative, which is like a no-no. That's not a, that's not really allowed. Like, what are you thinking? You're not going to believe this, Sam. I believe that everybody should be treated as their actions dictate and as their thoughts dictate and not on their immutable characteristics. I believe that Black people can have a plethora of ideas and we shouldn't judge them as a monolithic group. And I believe the same thing for gay people and women and all sorts of people. And really your sexual identity or your sexual preference or your gender or the color of your skin really has nothing to do with what you think about the issues. Unfortunately, in the modern left, it has everything to do with what you think about the issues. But in reality, all of us just wanna be treated as individuals. So. I happen to be gay, you know, like to me, it's sort of like zippity damn do die. You know, I've, I've been with my husband for, <laughs> we've been married for six years. We've been together for 10 years, which in straight years, it's like 30 years or something. <laughs> um, but do you, you know, it, that's, that's what my husband says about us. That, when we got, when we hit the 10 year anniversary, he's like, that's a golden anniversary in Hollywood. <laughs> in Hollywood, in Hollywood. Yeah. Same, same uh, calculator, I think. Um, <laughs> But in essence, I actually don't see much of a, a conflict between sort of gay and conservative, because generally speaking, conservatives want a society based on individual rights with the government not that much in your way. Now, that's not to say conservatives have been right about all of this stuff. And there was a time, I think, where conservatives were trying to get into people's bedrooms and seeing who they were sleeping with and maybe what they were smoking, but I don't sense that's the future of conservatism. Uh, I sense that the future of conservatism is much more, hey, we want all sorts of people in a very wide tent of a party, and maybe some people will be religious, maybe some people won't. We're gonna have some straight people, we're gonna have some gay people, but we, we're here to conserve America, we're here to conserve freedom and the constitution and all that good stuff, and I'm very much interested in that. So is that really kind of what inspired your shift was that you saw that the progressives were uh, you know what, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. What what inspired you to shift? Yeah, I mean, there were a couple of things, but, it, but the crux of it was this. It, something seemed very out of whack with the equation with the progressives. You know, I was on the Young Turks Network, which is a far left YouTube channel. And every single day, we'd go on air and basically just call everybody a racist and everybody a bigot and everybody a homophobe. And I actually, in my book, I lay out a couple of the instances where I really woke up, but one of them was we were on air covering a guy by the name of David Webb, who you might know. He's a Sirius XM host on the Patriot Channel. He's on Fox News often. He's a conservative who happens to be black. And we were showing a clip of him on Fox News and my other hosts, these tolerant lefties, were talking about how he was an Uncle Tom and a sellout and all these horrible things. And what they didn't know was that I was good friends with David Webb because I used to have a show on Sirius XM before that. And I was a lefty at the time and David was on the right, but we would go on each other's shows and we'd debate stuff. And then we'd go downstairs to Del Frisco's and have a steak and have some whiskey. And I know that he is a good man who believes in what he talks about. But here I had these, again, so-called tolerant progressives saying, oh, that black man who doesn't think the way we think all black people should think, he must be the worst of all things. And in that moment, it so crystallized to me who the bigots are, who the real racists are, and, and who's using prejudice, right? Prejudice is to prejudge. Well, they see black man and they think, oh, black man must think this way. And as I said before, I think black people can think all sorts of different things. That doesn't mean they're right. 
but you could think all sorts of different things and it shouldn't be dictated by the color of their skin. So that was one of several instances that really just were like a smack in the face to me because I knew him. It wasn't just like someone on TV. It was like, no, you're actually talking about my friend and he's not a sellout and he's not self-hating or whatever else you might be saying about him. Right. Um, love David Webb. And what I really admire about him is he's intellectually honest. Yeah. And that's also something that I admire about you. And so you were a progressive. It's, it's, it's one thing to say, hey, the progressives think that people should act in a sort of in a monolithic manner. They should act. You got to act your skin color now. You got to act your sexuality yeah. now or, or you don't or you don't belong. But but then there's there's quite a leap from that to conservative values, small government, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, I think what happened to me was as I started seeing how bananas the left was going, I started talking to some conservatives and progressives generally don't talk to conservatives. Conservatives very often, and I see this now, are willing to talk to the other side. The other side is rarely willing to talk to conservatives because they've labeled them all Nazis. And why would you sit down with Nazis? And that, that's one of the things that I started calling out as a lefty. I kept saying, hey, we got to stop doing this because it's not what we're doing to them. It's what we're doing to ourselves. We're painting ourselves into a corner here. I was warning about this with Trump. I kept saying to everybody, you know, you got to stop calling this guy Hitler because A, he's not Hitler and we use these over the top ridiculous comparisons. But what if you find out a few years into the Trump presidency that it's actually pretty good, that the economy's going and we're not going to extra wars and things are all right. It's like, well, you can't suddenly be like, you know, that Hitler guy is actually not that bad. So it's more <laughs> what you're, it's more what you're doing to yourself than what you're doing to them. Um, as for the movement, well, then I started talking to some conservatives and I talked to Ben Shapiro and I talked to Larry Elder and I talked to Dennis Prager, all the scary conservative names. And what I found was I disagreed with them on, on some stuff, but they were completely willing to have the conversation and be open and agree to disagree. And then what I realized is these people are also much nicer. They're much kinder. They're much more generous of spirit and time. Um, and liberals, and I say this with all due irony, but liberals generally are afraid of their own shadow. They, they want to be liked desperately, almost as the most important thing. And conservatives, I think, take the world more seriously. And I think because of that, they have a better cohesive view of the world. And, and I'm interested in that. Well, I think they're, they're sort of wrestling with the world and the liberals want to have it decided so that they don't have to think about it anymore and they can maybe yeah. just get on with stuff. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, that my, my main focus is education Mm -hmm. And I was at an education summit recently and we were talking about, you know, how to fix it. And I think that one of the one of the big problems that we have is that we've got teachers unions that really sort of run the show. And so I wanted to get your thoughts on that. If you've if you've looked into it, if you. Yeah. If, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, I've done a couple shows on this, including one that you were on uh, just about teachers unions and they're completely out of control amount of power and then especially how that really is deeply connected to Democrat politics, especially in New York and in California. I mean, California has a, has a really particularly uh, nefarious brand of that. Um, I mean, as a general rule, one of the last things that I would say sort of allowed me to say I was still liberal was that I believed in public education. I come from public education I went to you know, elementary, junior high, high school. I went to a blue ribbon high school. I went to State University of New York at Binghamton. You know, it's a public school in, in New York. I got, a, I got a pretty good education, although I did come out of political lefty, so maybe not a perfect education. But I believe that, but in essence, I believe that there was some role for the state. Now, in the last year and a half, between COVID and lockdowns and locking you know, just kids at home, and critical race theory and the and 1619 project and the series of deeply anti-American ideas, not even deeply anti-American, ideas that are antithetical to freedom and the very founding of this country. I mean, that's the purpose of the 1619 project. After seeing that so infect the, every level of our education system, now literally we're talking about it in kindergarten and there's probably, they're probably bringing it into preschool in ways we can't even imagine too. But then watching that work all the way up, I don't know how I can at, at this point call for any level of public education. I would be, I'm basic, you know, first off, I'm for school choice. So I think charter schools are great. 
I think we should have as much school choice as possible. I think there's going to be a, a, well, we know this is happening already, a growing homeschool movement. And then I would be for what uh, Corey D'Angelis, who when you were on my show, he was on as well, is all about, which is that we should be funding students and not schools. So, you know, each parent gets X amount of dollars for that child. They have to use it towards education, but they get to make the choice around that. Because at this point, to send your kids to public school, and I get not everybody has the means not to do it. So that's why we have to deal with choice and funding kids and all that. But to send your kids to public school, you're in essence sending them to be brainwashed. I mean, your kids could literally come home and after a week in a public school and start telling you that you're racist, you're part of the patriarchy, you know, your, your family is evil and, and just the, the horrific litany of things that we all now know. So it's, it's interesting because if we had had better education, I suppose, a better educational system for the last however many decades, we probably wouldn't be in this situation. But now nobody knows anything. People don't know basics about, about history. They don't know basics about economics. Two plus two doesn't equal four anymore. So we're watching the entire thing collapse. And of course, what's the left answer to it? More money, just give it more money and then they'll magically turn around. Yeah, I think part of the problem, and I, I don't wanna park here for too long, but part of the problem is now that teachers have been taught all of this. And so they're insisting on the woke culture. I'll call yeah. it the woke culture uh, in the classroom. And I, I was talking to somebody uh, just this weekend and her daughter was, she is, she was married to a black man. She's white. The daughter is biracial. And so the, the, the school is teaching her daughter that her, that she is oppressed by her mother. And the woman marched down there and said, you're, you're basically teaching my daughter that I'm oppressing her because I'm white. But what you don't understand is she's oppressed by her father who left us when she was two years old. Ooh, a black guy. Ooh. Like had they take had they take that? Not, not well. very well. You know, well. It, it, you can't you can't call people out on an ideology that's so deeply ingrained. And so, you know, I see this as as a as a bigger problem than that. And then I just want to mention that um, it occurs to me that when so when something is for free, is it valued? No, right? Not really. That's the why idea? Bernie wants free college. Right. Right, which is which will be the death sentence for college, in in certain respects, although because it's all bureaucratized now and the government's involved, it's it's a bigger problem than that, right? Well, of course. First off, you know when when they tell you they want free college, okay, for, we know nothing's free, but they just love the bumper sticker slogan. It's free. All right, free. What do you mean? Like, are you are we paying the janitor? What about the professors? Like, someone's right. getting paid. <laughs> And that's no, right, that like that's learning anything, right? They well, but they say so they say these things all the time, and and it's just meaningless. But it sort of sounds right if you're not thinking. So a young person that's 15, they hear Bernie Sanders say, "I want free college for everybody," and it's like, "Oh, that sounds good. Why shouldn't I be allowed to go to free college?" But then, of course, the, someone has to pay for the electricity. Someone's got to pay uh, the the lady in the lunchroom. Like somebody's got to pay for some of this stuff. And what he means is. We, we, as the government, will take from people we don't like and don't agree with, who in most cases are the producers, the main drivers of the economy, and then we will pay people to teach the things we want to teach. This is the key part. Bernie Sanders does not want free college so that kids can go to college to learn all sorts of different ideas. He's not sending them to college so that they can read a Thomas Sowell book on economics. But if you wanted to train the next generation of Marxists and socialists, where would a better place to be to send them than free state education? I mean, it sounds it sounds right out of communist 101, right? Like the state should educate them for free to teach them what the state wants. And yet when Bernie says it, people think he's somehow being good. He's tricked people into thinking that that virtue, that selfishness in essence is a virtue, which is a really dangerous idea, but it seems to have just solidified around almost everyone on the left. So that's, I mean, that's a really great way of putting it. In fact, I, I get into arguments with people who think that communism is good. And I finally say, communism is great. As long as you can solve the selfishness problem, once you can, <laughs> you know, get rid of human selfishness, we'll be fine if we're communist, like communism would be great. But the problem is well, you're, you're have dealing to kill with a lot of humans. What's that? You'd have to kill a lot of humans to do it. Well, you, you have to eliminate selfishness, which you cannot do. Yeah. Like you, you first, <laughs> you know, like, well, well, that's, that's not going to go anywhere. 
that's the thing. They'll tell you right now, if you were to listen to the average sort of BLM, communist, Marxist, whatever you want to call it, they would tell you capitalism doesn't work because humans are selfish, right? They would say Jeff Bezos is selfish. Jeff Bezos, who's created extraordinary wealth, not only for himself, but for hundreds of thousands of people. And by the way, when Jeff Bezos uh, buys a $500 million yacht, all sorts of people get paid to work on that yacht, to build the yacht and everything else. Now we could have some philosophical argument about, you know, is there a amount that is too much? Now, I don't like the idea of the government coming in and taking it from them, really, just to put it to their pet projects. But we could have a philosophical argument on that. But somehow they think that capitalism doesn't work because people are too selfish, but communism will work. Right. Despite because that same thing in human nature. This is a major flaw in the argument. Government people aren't selfish. Yeah, right. That's, That's the what... difference, Dave. You got to understand when you get into government, you stop being selfish and you just work for the people. That's why you... none of our government officials take a salary. Oh, none of them take a salary. None of them get richer. <laughs> Do any of our politicians get richer while they're in government? Could that possibly be? So Do any were... of them get richer? Exactly. So what you were saying before about free college I extrapolate down the line, and I think it's problematic that parents are under the impression that public school is free because then they, they basically they don't value it. And the children also won't be valuing the stuff that they're getting for free, like all the information that they're being fed. And that's actually can be our saving grace because I think the youth of today are deeply skeptical about what they're being taught because they're naturally skeptical and it doesn't, it really doesn't pass the smell test. Well, what you're talking about there is the, the beauty of the human mind that yes. there are, there in essence are young people now who are being brought up in a, in a time where truth is being destroyed. I mean, we're in this reality war truth. It would almost, when you hear someone tell the truth, it's so refreshing because you're like, oh my God, nobody tells the truth anymore, right? Yes. That's why Jordan Peterson, uh, you know, lit up the world the way that he did because he was a he was a man telling some simple truths in in a rather uh, right. in a rather deep way. But but in a normal time, if things were pretty good, you wouldn't. Jordan may not have become Jordan because people would have been like, oh, he's just saying what's obvious. But right. in a in a dark time, you know, simple truths mean a lot. But I, I love what you're saying there because to me, and, and I see this, by the way, I see this with, uh, I've seen this when I talk to some of my interns who are, you know, 18, 19 years old, they have a massive distrust of virtually everyone before them. And that's, by the way, that's kind of depressing because it right. shows you that, that we have all dropped the ball at some level. But what it also shows you is there's something about the human mind that knows what's right, that knows what's true. And it will put more of a burden on them to build a better world on top of the fact they got to fight the wokesters, just generally speaking, and, and you know, the mayhem on the streets and all that. But I'm, I'm enthused because the human spirit is what will get us through this thing. It's not the government that's going to get us through this thing. Right. So we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back from the break, or if you're listening on radio, uh, the rest of this show you can find over at Locals. Go to sorbos.locals.com. I'm going to ask Dave about why wealthy people are socialist, also about the government now competing with uh, minimum wage, and finally, why I haven't heard him declare for governor of California. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'll be right back.